I programmed control systems for power plants. Did this for 15 years and then I stumbled over crypto uh, 10 years ago and um, was very interested in kind of in the tech behind it. And then um, as a theorem emerged, that's how we met first time. And I told them, I wanted to explain to them how energy market works, was, which is incredibly complex. So while they were uh, working on Ethereum, we did a lot of research, you know, how could we apply this technology to uh, lower the transaction fees in the energy market by 99%. So what my, my challenge always was, how can we take these abstract things and transform this into business and make business more um, efficient? Gav came up with an idea how we could create a consortium, a technology for a consortium where we have uh, known validators, known parties that create the network, and uh, but anyone could use the network. It's the only, actually the largest kind of consortium chain where all those companies here from Shell, the largest companies in the world and startups, they create the chain. We did task forces, we created frameworks, how to track electricity, how to, how to deal with... Um, um, identities of energy assets, and that all happened five years ago. Thing is, we never went on any crypto stages talking about it. In energy, pretty much everyone knows us. In crypto, nobody knows us, because we were really focusing only on, 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 on real business. This is one chain. One chain has a limited bandwidth for transactions. A lot of these um, corporates, um, in the last few years, they made a lot of kind of um, application-specific chains, because there is a bunch of applications where you don't need to put the data on the public chain. Let me give you an example. So there's two largest banks in, in France and the two largest utilities, EDF and Angie. They created a chain together with four validators. They're making a kind of a digital print of all the invoices. And the banks, they're using these digital prints to do KYC, to understand who's kind of, who's the party that is applying for a bank account. 30% of all the applications uh, to the banks are forged. And so they brought down the KYC cost uh, from 10 euro to uh, 3 euro. And there is a lot of these application-specific kind of chains which essentially copied the technology from us. So we have a couple of um, uh, deals on country level with regulators. So there is one deal, for example, with Australia, with an Australian regulator and transmission system operator. In two years, all the asset identities and data access management will run on this chain. It's a done deal. And we have six other countries where this is already, it, it, will, be, it will basically become law uh, that this technology is being used. And then those chains through, the, uh, through Polkadot can start talking to each other. So once you have the identities, the second is the trading. Once you can authenticate trading, then you can plug in the whole decentralized finance on top of it, refinancing, lending, and so forth. That is already happening in, in Polkadot. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this because when we started talking about this, this was just, you know, it felt like a pipe dream. Can we change such a big industry like energy? But you know, five years down the road, it's happening. You know, it's it's really coming. There is, it's inevitable, because we're reducing transaction costs by more than 99 percent.